60 years ago, Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit the Earth. This was a turning point in history because it started to fundamentally change the way that we as humans thought about our role in the universe. By the end of the decade, astronauts had landed on the moon, and it wasn't long after that paying passengers started flying above the oceans in supersonic airliners. So at the time, people quite reasonably thought that by the end of the century, we might be landing on other planets, or at least flying around our own at even greater speeds in even faster aircraft. Now that hasn't really happened. Whether you're a pilot or a passenger, you can't really fly any more quickly today than you would have been able to in the 1960s. And one of the big reasons for this is a very small scale phenomenon known as boundary layer transition. So what is a boundary layer? Well, imagine a jet flying through the atmosphere. It might be tempting to think that the jet just pushes all the air around it out of the way and that that's that. However, in reality, a small amount of air sticks to the surface of the jet due to friction. That thin layer of air, that's what we call a boundary layer. We know from many years of observations that boundary layers typically start out as smooth, organized flows, but eventually transition to become chaotic and unpredictable or turbulent. That might not seem like an important distinction for such a small amount of air, but for an aircraft traveling well above the speed of sound, the difference between a smooth boundary layer and a turbulent boundary layer can literally be the difference between life and death. The reason why is that a turbulent boundary layer produces vastly more heat and vastly more friction on the surface of an aircraft. So trying to design and build a high-speed aircraft without understanding the physics of the boundary layer can mean that the aircraft literally melts or disintegrates in flight. And whether you're a pilot or a passenger, that's a pretty big deal. Luckily, we've built a lot of high-speed wind tunnels that allow us to safely study boundary layer transition on the ground. Unluckily, we've since learned that a lot of those wind tunnels produce acoustic disturbances or aerodynamic noise that affect the experiments we try to do within the tunnel. The noise doesn't just make it difficult to measure what's happening, it fundamentally changes what's happening because, as we've learned, high-speed boundary layers are intensely susceptible to the kinds of acoustic noise produced by the very wind tunnels we're trying to use to study them. It's a brutal irony, but what it means is that a lot of these high-speed wind tunnels aren't quite as useful as we might like. Luckily, we might be able to make them a little more useful. My research uses advanced computer simulations to study the effect of wind tunnel noise on wind tunnel experiments. The goal is to improve the utility of existing wind tunnels, which currently produce a lot of otherwise confusing and unexpected data. So far, our results suggest that the computational approach can accurately predict the effects of wind tunnel noise and replicate the results of physical experiments done in conventional wind tunnels. Our hope is that by better understanding high-speed boundary layers, we will be able to pave the way towards a new generation of high-speed aircraft and efficient spacecraft and take one small step closer to the space age dreams of the 1960s.